What is happening when the scrotum starts to swell? Welcome to this important video on Euro Channel, where I will be covering the most important differential diagnosis of scrotal masses. My name is Dr. Stefan Bundrock and I'm a board-certified urologist and specialist in sexual health. Lumps and bumps in the scrotum are core urology. I see them frequently in my daily practice. So how do I go about when a patient presents with that problem? I proceed the way I would when identifying birds. I know it may sound a bit strange to you, but once I wanted to become an ornithologist and what works for birds also works for medicine. In both cases, a systematic approach is crucial. Use all the information presented and eliminate what doesn't fit. So just by looking at age, painful or not, sudden onset versus slow onset, it is possible to eliminate a whole bunch of possible diagnoses, leaving a few where I then can start with my examination. In most cases, I can rely on my hands and ultrasound machine to make the diagnosis. The most common scrotal mass I encounter is a hydrocele. This is when fluid builds up around one testicle, forming a balloon-like sac. It's usually harmless, but can grow large and uncomfortable. In clinical examination, it is usually firm and even. In my office, I have an ultrasound machine that will tell me the right diagnosis immediately. However, in the old days, when I was working in a hospital, I used a practical bedside test. A flashlight. You hold it from underneath and the light will shine through when there is fluid inside. A hydrocele is usually nothing to worry about. I rarely send hydrocele for surgical intervention. Most of them are small and can be left as they are and they won't become larger. Another form of fluid collection that I frequently observe is called spermatocele. This is when fluid is collected in bubbles within the epididymis. Mostly, they are very small and the patients don't even know they have them. But sometimes, they can become large, like the size of an egg. Then, they may also cause pain and this would definitely be something to consider for surgery. However, any surgery on the epididymis poses a risk for fertility. Very important point to keep in mind. Likewise important is to like this video and subscribe to Euro channel. Creating content takes a lot of time and effort. So clap your hands if you like my videos. On YouTube, this means liking and subscribing. It's a win-win situation. It doesn't cost you anything and I will be rewarded for my work. Thank you. Similar to hydrocele's, spermatocele's are harmless. This is not cancer. On the other hand, testicular cancer will lead to a notable and increasing swelling of a scrotum. This mass is very hard and lumpy in examination. Ultrasound is very important for diagnosis. But as I initially said, thinking of birds will make the diagnosis easier. Testicular cancer typically is a disease of the young men. We are talking about ages 15 to 35 roughly. In principle, it can also happen beyond that age, but in the older male, it becomes much less likely. A benign condition that can be observed very often is a swelling of the venous drainage of the testicles, especially on the left side. We call that a varicocele. Varicoceles have been discussed controversially since I was a student. Leave them or treat them. I have a tendency to leave them and only think about treatment when there are fertility issues. Testicular torsion is a key condition to consider when diagnosing scrotal swelling. In adolescents and young adults, the testicle may twist around its axis. This will impair blood flow. Of course, this is an emergency that has to be treated as soon as possible. If you want to know more about it, I have uploaded a more detailed video. In contrast to the conditions I've mentioned so far, now we add pain to the spectrum of symptoms. Testicular torsion is painful. The same applies to infectious diseases like epididymitis, which are also painful. In infectious diseases, there is not only pain, but quite often also fever. However, sometimes it can be very tricky to separate testicular torsion from epididymitis. 
they look very much alike. If there is any doubt, surgical exploration may be necessary to confirm the diagnosis because untreated testicular torsion will cost you your testicle otherwise. These were the most common conditions I usually see, but the list is not complete. Leave a comment if this is something you are interested in and if you want to hear more about it. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.